How far would you go to defy the laws of physics? And how far would you go to impress the people around you and prove that you're one of the most audacious and fearless people on Earth? Would you go as far as risking your life? Please don't, I, I don't want to hear about that kind of thing. Though if that is the case, you might have some competition. Over the years, there have been plenty of people who have signed up to do very crazy stuff, and today we're going to be looking at 15 deadliest stunts that people signed up for. Our first entry is the Canyon Jump. One of the most daring motorcycle stuntmen was Evil Knievel. This man became a legend between the 60s and the 70s. His name was actually so big that he even got to be featured on cereal boxes, and back then that was kind of a big deal. Now, granted, this guy went through a lot of pain to get famous in his face on the cereal boxes. By the time he retired, he had a total of 433 fractures. And since the human skeleton only has about 206 bones, we can assume that some of his bones got broken more than once. Now, by far his most famous stunt was when he rocketed over the Snake River Canyon. He used a motorcycle that was powered by a rocket, but unfortunately his stunt failed and he fell on the canyon's floor. But hey, he survived, so I guess that's what really matters here. Our next entry is Wing Walks. There are many wing walkers, but none of them are as crazy as Omar Locklear. This guy became famous during the first half of the 20th century when he was documented walking out of the cockpit of a plane in midair just to fix an engine or do some repairs of the wings. The guy became instantly famous and Hollywood executives gave him all sorts of opportunities by immediately turning him into a stuntman. Sadly though, Omar did die in the 1920s while performing some of his stunts, but at least his life ended while doing something that he loved. Our next entry is the Rotterdam Slide. The Rotterdam Slide by Jackie Chan was one of his craziest and most noticeable stunts. He performed this one in 1998 while working on the movie Who Am I? He did a free fall slide down the Wilmsworth Building in Rotterdam, one of the most important cities in Europe. And as he slid down the 21 stories of the building and walked away without any scratches, he immediately gained a lot of recognition. Even today, it's still impressive. I mean, after all though, Jackie Chan has done quite a lot of movies and he's always getting beaten up in different ways while filming. But when he did this crazy stunt, he was completely fine and didn't get hurt. But I doubt he'd want to try it again. Our next entry is Chinese Water Torture Stunt. The Great Houdini was more than a legendary magician. He was also a legendary stuntman, doing all sorts of crazy acts that got a lot of attention. However, one of the craziest ones was the one called the Chinese Water Torture Cell. In this one, he was put inside a big tank full of water with his face down and his feet shackled while the tank was covered. What made the act so impressive was that Houdini always managed to get out of the tank by unlocking his feet and escaping without even spilling a single drop of water. It was pretty crazy though, but there were plenty of times when he almost didn't make it out, and one time he had to be resuscitated. But in the end, he always survived and blew everyone away. Our next entry is Bungie Jumping in the Golden Eye. Have you ever bungee jumped from a famous location? Do you feel proud of yourself for doing so? Well, whatever it is that you've done, I bet it can't top the greatest bungee jump of all time, the one in the 220 meter Swiss Dam. This one is significant because it appeared in GoldenEye, the James Bond movie from the mid-90s. This jump was so famous and big that it even got a place in the Guinness Book of World Records and it was performed by a British stuntman named Wayne Michaels. Sure, it might look pretty simple and straightforward on screen, but in reality, preparing for the stunt took three months of design and at least 20 engineers supported by 100 permits and waivers. Our next entry is a steam-powered rocket jump. Just like how Knievel used a rocket to fuel his motorcycle to fly over a canyon, one Mad Mike Hughes used a similar technology to soar for more than 1,300 acres across the Arizona desert in 2014. However, Hughes wasn't satisfied, so he continued working to improve his personal records. Sadly though, Mad Mike joined the list of many people who died while doing things that they loved. In 2020, Mike lost his life after the crash of a rocket that he was piloting. Our next entry is Landing on the Arch. 2009 was a big year for Robbie Madison, the motorcycle daredevil from Australia. That year he flew his bike 120 feet through the air to land on top of the 96 foot high arch at the Paris Hotel in Las Vegas. But all of that did come with a pretty hefty price. No, I'm not talking about money wise, but about pain. Robbie ended up with 10 stitches in one hand, however that wasn't anything new in his life. In the past, he'd also broken his neck, wrists, and other parts of his body, so those stitches felt like nothing compared to everything that had happened to him before. Our next entry is the final walk. 
Karl Wallenda was the patriarch of a German family that had become famous for their high-wire walking skills. However, on March 22nd of 1978, Karl's life came to an end after he tried to cross a wire strung between two towers in Puerto Rico. This came as a surprise since he was already 73 years old and had performed more difficult stunts before. But unfortunately, a wind dust caught him and made him fall. However, his legacy still remains alive today. In 2012, his great-grandson became the first person to walk a tightrope across the Niagara Falls. Our next entry is walking across the World Trade Towers. Right after the construction of the World Trade Towers in New York City, a man named Philippe Petit and some of his friends decided to put a wire between the towers just so Petit could walk across them. He mounted it, but it wasn't a simple walk. He danced, strutted, and even joked while being on the wire for 45 minutes while people watched from 110 stories below. Keep in mind that people were a bit more relaxed back in the day, and regulations weren't as strict as they are today. I'm sure right now you'd end up in jail if you tried something like that in any high building today. Our next entry is the Stratosphere Jump. Skydiving is quite a popular activity among the people who love to do extreme stuff, but most of the people who do it stay under the troposphere, the layer of the atmosphere that is closest to us and it's only about 20,000 feet high. You go above that, you enter the stratosphere, and not many people get to skydive from that height. But the first person to do this was Felix Baumgartner as he jumped from a small capsule that was placed 24 miles above Earth. It took him nine minutes to land, but he made it safely to Roswell, New Mexico. Our next entry is Changing Planes in Midair. It's been more than a hundred years since Omar Locklear became the famous wing walker that he was. However, there are always people trying new things with planes. This includes Paul Steiner, who in 2010 climbed out of a glider that was flying at a speed of 100 miles per hour over Austria. After he got out of his plane, he jumped onto the wing of another one, stood up, and then held onto the tail wing of the first plane while the two planes flew in tandem. I wouldn't worry too much, though. Steiner was wearing a parachute, so he made it back to the ground without a problem. Our next entry is the French Spider-Man. Don't you wish you could be like Spider-Man someday? Except maybe for, you know, not losing your uncle. Well, for one person named Elaine Robert, the dream did become a reality. This famous French man is famous for climbing some of the tallest structures all over the world. And the most impressive thing is that he usually does this without any ropes or harnesses. But that also means that a lot of his activities are considered illegal. One of his most famous stunts was performed on Christmas Day 2004 when he went to the top of the 101 building in Taipei, Taiwan. At the time, the building was the tallest one in the world. There was a lot of wind and rain, but thankfully nothing stopped him from getting to the top. And I believe that he was okay for the entire thing. Our next entry is the final flight of Johnny Strange. Johnny Strange was a hardcore adventurer. When he was 17, he became the youngest person to get at the top of the highest mountains in the world. Unfortunately, though, his life of adventure came to an end when he crashed into a mountain while filming a video for a wingsuit in the Swiss Alps. Johnny was aware of all the risks that were coming along the way, and he even reported that he was flying very close to stuff like mountains, rocks, and other dangerous things. But none of these dangers stopped him from trying one of the craziest stunts until his very last breath. Before we move on, do me a favor. My analytics show that only about 15% of you watching are actually subscribed. Come on guys, what's up with that? Can you guys please hit the subscribe button? You guys watch my videos every day anyway, so you might as well subscribe and keep up to date with every video we put out. Our last entry for the day, folks, is a deadly base jump. Building, antenna, span, or earth. These are the four words that make up the acronym BASE, a recreational sport in which people jump from fixed objects until they descend to the ground. One of the most famous base jumpers was Dean Potter. Most importantly, he was also one of the most safety-conscious people ever. But when he was 43, he attempted a wingsuit jump from Yosemite's Park Tap Point. This required him to clear a small notch on a rocky ridge line, which he failed to do. As a result, he crashed on impact and he died right on the spot. Today, base jumping is banned in Yosemite and in many other national parks around the world. These deadly stunts really make you think, huh? You guys ever tried a crazy stunt as the ones we saw today? Personally, I hope not. And if so, I'm just glad you're alive. If there's one thing we can learn from the people in this video is to pursue and do the things that we love. Just don't try anything illegal, please. Anyway, which of these was your favorite stunt? Which one was the craziest? Would you ever consider trying one of them? Well, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And with all that said and done, I'll see you all next time. Later, everybody.